Hey guys, so today we have more fun with firmware. Now, if you're not familiar, logo fail is a new discovered vulnerability that makes just about every single Windows and Linux device vulnerable to this new logo fail firmware attack. Now, this is all based on UEFI firmware. Originally, everything was BIOS, and now there's development with UEFI and UEFI is vulnerable to this new attack and so you know core boot devices shouldn't be vulnerable and uh, Libre boot shouldn't be vulnerable to this um, so if you have a Libre boot BIOS or a core boot BIOS uh, that should not be affected here and Purism has also made a statement that their core boot is not vulnerable. As you can see right here, it mentions on the Purism forum that they mentioned that their devices are not affected by this. Now, what it is, is a vulnerability in the image parser. And so when someone has a boot splash that can introduce the vulnerability, it can then modify the system. Now what's especially dangerous about this is it's essentially a firmware type of boot kit. So not like a bootloader boot kit, but a firmware for the operating system. That's where this vulnerability lies. And that's what makes it so dangerous because of the fact that it is persistent in the hardware. And so what that means is even if you change your storage device, even if you erase everything, you overwrite it with random data and restart all over. Doesn't matter. If this has exploited you and there's a backdoor introduced through this exploit, uh, well, you're in trouble because this is persistent in your hardware and uh, it's a very big problem unless you have something like a Core Boot BIOS or a Libre Boot BIOS. So this is brand new. It was introduced at Black Hat and they actually have a proof of concept here that we can take a look at and just see them do a small demonstration. Uh, so we can go ahead and take a look at that video now. Now, one positive thing is about this, now I guess you can't really call it positive, is there needs to be an administrator, as, as you can see, it's an administrator uh, shell right here. So there needs to be administrator access on the Windows or Linux system before they can exploit this firmware vulnerability. But that can be done various ways, including remotely. And they talk about how it could be done remotely. So something could own your hardware on the long term. And that's what persistence means, is that it would be uh, owned long term, even if you change your uh, storage device. So as you can see, they introduced this uh, logo here. And that allowed them to exploit the image parser for the images. And uh, then they can create a file successfully on Linux or the Windows system. So that would allow them to do any number of things on your local file system. They could introduce all kinds of backdoors. So if you remember my coverage before I covered Superfish and how Lenovo laptops in 2015 were discovered to have a BIOS backdoor that was created by an Israeli core intelligence programmer, at least says he was a former Israeli core intelligence programmer. And uh, this individual created something called Commodia, which could have possibly acted as a, a possible, a plausible deniability. Now, I'm just hypothetically speaking here, I'm not making any claims. Uh, they also ran a parental control unit where they were able to break the HTTPS uh, for all websites by introducing a malicious certificate. And that was also a persistent firmware backdoor, meaning that you would need something like core boot flashing or just a clean BIOS flashing, even just a stock but clean without this. They apparently use contractors for the firmware and uh, down the supply chain from the hardware manufacturing. And then there's also contractors that handle various other ends. So between you and the factory, several different contractors are working on your computer for various parts for the manufacturer of that computer. And sometimes something can be slipped in, like we saw with Superfish, and uh, what we need to know about this and why it relates here is they're both basically BIOS type backdoors and they're persistent in the firmware of the hardware. And what that means is you would have to actually 
reflash the hardware in order to get rid of some of the potential problems that this could introduce. It could also introduce the same type of thing that was done with Superfish. And one thing about the Superfish bug is it was, I don't even call it a bug, it's a backdoor. Uh, it introduced a malicious root certificate every time you reinstalled Windows. Now, with Superfish, you could have simply installed Linux because it only targeted Windows systems. But in this case, if this was exploited, it could very well target any operating system. At this point, it's just a vulnerability. It hasn't been capitalized on that we know of. Uh, and it was introduced at the Black Hat conference, but they could do the same type of thing where they could introduce malicious certificate authorities. They could do something to break the HTTPS on all your websites forever. Um, and uh, that's a big deal because even if you reinstall your hardware, your, your storage device, or you flash over your storage device, that's not enough here because it's a persistent hardware firmware problem uh, that would allow them to exploit it uh, as long as they can gather the administrative privileges. So even if you download something like a fork and it happens to have malicious code and you have to install it with sudo, that would be enough to exploit something like logo fail. So it's a really big deal and I wanted to do a video just to talk about it really quickly uh, just because I think it's something everyone needs to know about. Uh, so if you have something like a core boot BIOS, you're not, you shouldn't be worried really about this uh, because this is affecting the UEFI um, found in most stock hardware. So it can affect many different computers. It could affect other devices. It also affects ARM. So keep this part in mind. It can also bypass secure boot. So it's a really big deal because of that. Uh, most people rely on secure boot for their Windows operating systems. Um, some people will rely on other options like heads, core boot for tamper detection for Linux based operating systems or cubes. Um, but secure boot is what is relied upon for many Windows environments. So when you get a new computer, it's likely to come with secure boot. And that is something that's meant to prevent someone from basically installing a malicious operating system on your system. Uh, so we have this graph here, this little photo where you can kind of see how it works. It's in the DXE. The driver execution environment is where it can be exploited in the UEFI secure boot and the image parser is where it is actually vulnerable and there's several vulnerabilities involved. So it's not just a single problem. And sometimes that's why these complex systems like UEFI can be so vulnerable because they're, they're complex enough that it's harder to audit. And the more different paths that are given, the more likely it is that there's going to be some form of exploitation available to those paths. So that's one reason I really believe in simplifying things, because when you simplify something, at least you can see it all and you can take a look, a little closer look than if you have a more complex setup where something you know, is open to one of these vulnerabilities like an image parser here. And they use a fuzzer, which basically tries various different things to, you know, the memory addresses. So they're able to find ways to exploit and discover new bugs by what's called fuzzing, where they actually uh, automate a lot of the exploitation by trying various different memory addresses to see the response in it. So you can see some of that here. And they talk about the different image parsing code and where you can find this vulnerability. Uh, so you can actually see some of the breakdown on it. And they talk about in this article a brief history of firmware exploits as well. But really, I don't really trust the proprietary stuff that comes on hardware. And the way I look at it is... When you think about it, everything evolves. So when you think of backdoors, do you think they really devolve or do you think they are more likely to evolve? I would be willing to bet they are constantly evolving and getting more complex and more difficult to discover, just as we've seen in recent history. So when I look at this type of problem, I say, do I really need the greatest, latest hardware, as they call it? Or do I want something that we have a good understanding of and uh, we can mitigate as best for our own 
you know possible situations so personally I do enjoy using core boot laptops um, but you know I also enjoy using arm systems things like Pine 64's hardware you know I appreciate all the different hardware from Purism as well um, and you know there's various companies out there that do provide core boot laptops and I also provide it as a way to support the channel so if you're interested in that you can always check it out on the blog there's a shop and also a commission section for that uh, but I did want to introduce this because I thought it was a really big deal considering it's probably affecting most of the computers out there in the world right now and it also can bypass Intel boot guard as well as secure boot so it's a really serious vulnerability guys make sure to leave a comment let me know what do you think do you think your system is vulnerable to this or are you running something that's not vulnerable I'd love to hear your thoughts on this exploit in the comments below and do you think this is going to be taken advantage of and uh, exploited in the wild I'd love to know your thoughts so leave a comment make sure to like the video subscribe so you don't miss anything and share the video everywhere on social media sharing on social media really helps the channel and it helps move things up further in the recommendations for searches because it makes it appear as a channel that is more reliable for content so just go ahead and share the video comment like and I will be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy